Hello everybody. Thank you for coming along this evening. I'm Adrian actually. <laughs> Stuart's over there, Stuart, you've got, you've got me and Stuart come as a double act. So uh, you've got me first and then Stuart's going to talk about some of the technical stuff that we do. Uh, firstly, I want to say a big thanks to, to, to Mayor Pat who has facilitated this evening and it's fantastic to see, well I've counted 60, 70, 80 people here tonight, it's absolutely wonderful. So thank you all for giving up your Monday night and coming to hear us blather on for, for an hour or so. Um, I want to just give you a little bit of background to slow the flow and how we came to be in existence because we, we were born out of uh, the, big, the big Boxing Day floods of 20, 2015. And we got together, a group of us, to decide we needed to do something about this. We needed to understand the, 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 the scientific reasons why the Calder Valley floods. Now, the Calder Valley is always flooding. It's, you know, it's, the records go back four or five hundred years. Um, but we wanted to find out why. So we, we put a big, really good team of trustees together, or volunteers together. And we marked on... Um, oh, I can't... Tell you what, I'll do this bit first. I'll do this bit first. You might have heard last year we actually won the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service, which we were quite pleased about. <laughs> Calderdale had something like um, 14 winners, and we were one of them. I mean, it was, it was incredible. No, sorry, West Yorkshire had 14, Calderdale had about seven. And we were great. And, and the great thing about the Queen's Award is that it recognises all the work that we've done at the likes of Hardcastle Cracks. Now, you've all been to Hardcastle Crags, you all live really locally, and you'll all know about the work, that hopefully, that's gone on in Hardcastle Crags. We've been working there with the National Trust for about four or five years, building now, we number probably 700 leaky dams. And the leaky dams, and Stuart will talk a little bit about this, uh, potentially, but we, they're all on our website. There's lots of stuff documented about how the leaky dams work, but essentially, they slow the flow of water down in the tributaries that feed the big rivers. Okay. And when you've got 700 of them, they make quite an impact. It means that the river levels are slightly lower, the, the river moves in a slightly different way. And as a result, anecdotally, and now we're proving through science and through some of the monitoring that we're doing, that what we're doing actually works. And it, it does affect the way the river into Hebden Bridge works. And what we want to do is, is to try and build that along the valley. It's not all about Hebden Bridge. You all, you know, you, many of you live in, in Todmorden and, you know, it's not all about Hebden Bridge and Marley Wood. We want to work here in the Upper Calder Valley as well. So, uh, and, and the Queen's Award has gone to not just a, a dozen or so trustees that have worked with Slow the Flow. It's all the, the, probably a thousand volunteers over that time that have worked, worked with us. And some of you are here tonight. I'm not going to embarrass you. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, 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 it's a team effort and it's been fantastic and we want, to try and we want to try and build on that through Mayor Pat's help by building up some of these networks and some of doing things for ourselves instead of solely relying on, you know, the, the, the government and the local authorities and the environment agency because we can do things for ourselves along with, you know, the stuff that, the stuff that they do. Um, so please have a look on the website, slowtheflow.net, because there's some fantastic blogs, there's some great um, uh, articles on, on the kind of natural flood management processes and techniques that we utilise. Um, some of the other work that we've done, and I'm not going to go into great detail because we are pushed for time and I'm sure you don't want to be sat here at 10 o'clock tonight, and believe me, I could sit you here till 10 o'clock tonight telling you about what we've done. But, you know, we, we've done a lot of work in Mardenwood, for instance, with um, sustainable drainage, uh, on, on looking at how you can slow the flow using sustainable drainage methods. Again, the information is there on the website. Sarah Jane's already touched on some of that. Things like water pumps, things like other things like tree planting, uh, attenuation ponds, which Stuart will talk about shortly. Um, and, and these are all things that you can all get involved in. You know, it's, it's not all down for someone else to do it. Things that we can do for ourselves. We've recently appointed two educational trustees at Slow the Flow who are working with and developing a, a part of the, uh, the educational tools that we want to promote uh, into schools, into primary, secondary and tertiary education to get kids and, and students thinking about uh, natural, natural processes, leaky dams, attenuation bonds, uh, tree planting, etc and how all that fits together and how that does, you know, helps to slow the flow using natural methods. Um, 
We've also appointed a fundraising trustee as well because one of our ambitions, one of our ambitions is to grow Slow the Flow into an even bigger and even better organisation than we are already, he says humbly. Um, and, you know, this is, this, is, this is all part of what we want to do. So, you know, if you do want to get involved with us, please get it, come, and, come and see us at the back there afterwards. You know, there's, there's still the, uh, the, the Nicky Dam building at Hardcastle Crags. You may have expertise that we didn't know you had. You may have expertise you didn't know you had. You know, let, come and talk to us. Let's, let's work together to, you know, to try and promote uh, using natural methods. And finally, uh, and Ben, I know Ben from Coddledale is going to be talking a little bit about this. We've set up a page on our website called Volunteer Your Land. So if you own a field or a wood or a whole farm and uh, you would like to utilise natural methods to slow the flow of water, if you go to the website and look for the pages that say Volunteer Your Land, uh, there's information on there about how you can do that uh, and it's coordinated through Calderdale Council and I know Ben's going to sort of touch on that shortly. Um, and there's the website. So uh, please, you know, I, as I said, I could keep you here for a lot longer than I've, I've managed to keep you here so far. So please have a look at the website. Also visit some of our, our social media, web, uh, Facebook and Twitter, um, etc. Right, I'm going to introduce Stuart now who uh, was one of our founding members of Slow the Flow, um, and uh, he's going to talk a bit about um, the attenuation ponds here in Tottenham. Thank you. <laughs> and he's got a cold as well, so. Uh, thanks everybody for, for turning out tonight on wet night. Um, so my name is Stuart Bradshaw, um, I'm, I'm, uh, well, I trained as a civil engineer back in the 1980s. Um, we just had the sales department on from Slow the Flow, I'm the, uh, the technical department if you like. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is these three little projects that I've been involved with here uh, in Topperdon. And uh, the first one uh, was done in 2016 and it's up Woodhouse Road if, if anyone knows that. Um, there's a little hamlet up there of, five to, uh, of about eight terraces, I think there are, and uh, they've been, been continually flooded uh, since about 2007. I think they've been flooded three times. Um, so after the Boxing Day flood of 2015, um, each of those properties that were flooded, there were five in total, they were received a, a grant from Calderdale <coughs> under the repair and, use, uh, re repair and use scheme that was available at the time. So they, they each got £5,000, so the, the, the budget was £25,000 and, and Calderdale asked me if I'd go and have a look to see what we could do there. Uh, so when I arrived there in the spring of 2016, um, I was confronted by um, five uh, very upset people, uh, as you can probably understand. Um, but they, they did have uh, uh, you know, some promising landowners that they were surrounded by. So there was a field in front uh, and a field behind the properties. The properties are just on the left of the depression you can see. You can just see the top of the roofs of the, the terraces which run into the hillside. Um, and uh, what, was, what was happening was that the water was running off quite a steep hill at the back and straight into these properties uh, and getting into five or six of them, uh, which we've got to say, you know, they must have had, you know, a real terrible time over the years. Um, so they got their own ideas of what they wanted to do, uh, which involved piping a lot of the water away. Uh, when I looked into that, uh, I realised that the, um, the cost of the pipes alone would actually exceed their budget. And I wouldn't have been happy about doing that myself, because all, of course all that does is, you know, it solves their problem, but it just gives everybody else the problem. Um, so, so what I proposed was um, to do an attenuation pond. And I've got, at the end of this little chat, I've got a little film to show you which illustrates exactly how this system works. Um, so the picture on the left is the pond under construction and the, the, the picture on the right is, is about six months later. So it's returned to a field. It's still used for, um, for grazing as it was before. Uh, the embankments are about a metre and a half high, that sort of order. There's a pipe that runs out of the embankment and it disappears through that ground there and into, onto a road, discharges the, the water onto the road as you will see shortly. 
Um, so that, this whole project cost around about um, £25,000. It was about on budget, and that was including uh, my tiny fees um, for my involvement. And obviously the digging and the pipe work, the concrete uh, that was involved. Um, and, uh, and, and, and since, since this has been constructed, um, they've not been flooded since, as far as I'm aware. Um, so so that's, that's the good news there. Um, so I'll, I'll now move on. Okay, so Shoot Road Dam. Um, this is a dam that sits above um, Morrison's, Morrison's supermarket, where there used to be a very large weaving shed at one time, I believe. Upon it. It's the largest weaving shed in Europe at one time or other. Um, and of course it had a steam engine, and so it needed a supply of water. So this, this dam sits on the supply network to that mill, uh, part of the Gaddings um, system, I think. And it had just been abandoned, it was used as a fishing pond, uh, and the Boxing Day flood caused quite a bit of damage to this, to this earthwork. So it overtopped on Boxing Day, uh, damaged the, uh, the dam wall, and obviously then became a hazard really, rather than anything else, a hazard to the town. So it wasn't until 2018 that I got to be aware of it, um, and I saw the opportunity there to try and make this into an asset rather than a liability. So last year, um, some grant money became available and we spent, I think it was about 30 odd thousand putting this dam right. So what we did uh, was we um, rebuilt part of the dam there where it had failed, um, we strengthened it, we removed a lot of the silt that was in the bottom there and we put a low level pipe in. So a pipe just above that water level now runs under the, under the embankment and down to where the water was originally discharging. Um, there was an overflow culvert on this, on this dam, which was too narrow, uh, which was probably the reason why it overtopped in the first place. Uh, so we widened that, strengthened the dam, put the low level pipe in, and of course we've got a nice big attenuation pond there with capacity of about 3,500 cubic metres. So it's fed by two culverts, uh, and, uh, and it obviously will fill. Uh, you know, and there's a valve on the, on the, on the pipe so that you can adjust the outflows on the pipe. And if it ever does try to overflow, overflow again, it's got the overflow channel, which has now been modified to take the water away safely. So that's another nice project that was done last year. It cost around £32,000, I think. Who paid for that? Sorry? Who paid for that? It, it was paid for by a grant that Coldenale got. Um, they got the grants back in 2016. I think there was a million pound pot altogether that they got, and it was part of that. Okay, so this is the same dam, these are just a couple of other photographs. So on the left, that was just after completion, and then six months later. And I have been recently, actually, and so it's, it's more or less completely re-established itself now. Uh, you wouldn't actually know we'd done any work there. So this is another project, this is up, up cross Lee Road in Tobberden. So this is the hillside that sits, op sits opposite where the caravan place used to be. Um, and what you can see here, and if you go on Google Maps, I've had a look tonight actually, uh, you will see a scar on the landscape just above there. And this is what, actually what it is. It's, uh, this was a flat field uh, prior to the Boxing Day flood. And in this flat field was a culvert um, a stone Roman design covered, so in other words, flat bottom, flat top, stone sides. Um, and the culvert um, was surcharged by all the flood water that was coming through it on Boxing Day. It completely washed out the culvert uh, and washed out all the ground that surrounded the culvert, and all that material ended up downstream under the railway bank in, in, in a culvert owned by Network Rail. Uh, causing quite a lot of damage uh, and Network Rail then had to re recover that culvert uh, at, at a huge expense, I, I understand. So um, I saw this again probably about 2018 for the first time and uh, what we decided to do was is to, to sort of shallow the sides, which you'll see in the, in the next photograph, 
um, and use the material that we recovered from that operation to build an attenuation pond on the land you see in the right hand photograph. So the right hand photograph is at the top of the hill um, and it was at a nice flat area of land uh, which would, would ha quite happily accommodate an, an attenuation pond. So if we go to the next picture, this is after completion. So as you can see, we've got the battered sides that we did, which were reseeded. And then you can see there's the attenuation pond with the embankment there with the material recovered from that battering process that we, we did. That's where the materials were, were recovered from to create the embankment. So you can just, well, probably you can't actually. There's a tiny, tiny pipe there in, 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 the, in the earthwork there, which lets the water out and into the adjacent watercourse, which is where those trees are. So what we've done, we've effectively um, split the watercourse, uh, split the flow. Some of it goes downhill uh, through that, the original route, and some of it goes to the left and into an adjacent watercourse. Um, so that's another job. I, I can't remember the cost of this one. It's probably around 15,000, I think. Um, so the next bit is, is the video, uh, which was very kindly uh, given to me by one of the residents at Old Royd, um, which really exemplifies, uh, in my view, um, money well spent, shall I say, because I think they possibly have, they could have been flooded twice. Uh, since, since, since it was constructed. So if you think there's five properties there, uh, and you know, if you just assume 5,000 pounds worth of damage for each one of those, then obviously, you know, two floods, 50,000 quid. Uh, and the actual cost of it was around about 25,000 pounds. So it's money well spent. It's, it's money that, as the project will be there, it's, you know, it's a forever project. So, you know, it will, it will prevent floods for those properties going forward. Uh, so, in my opinion, it's excellent money, well spent. So, we'll just play that video now. There isn't any sound. Um, you just have to read the... Um, So the, the, these photographs, or this video, was, was done uh, in February last year uh, in, during the storm Kira flood. I think it was around the 9th of February last year. So this is all the water gathering um, and then being diverted through that culvert there. And that takes it into the adjacent field. So that's the attenuation pond there, um, storing the water. And in a moment we'll see what looks like a fire guard. Um, and that's because it, it is a fire guard. We'll see it in a second. And this is this is for keeping rabbits out of the out of the pipe. There's a fire guard there, just below the water level. Yeah, so this is the outlet now, just downstream. Uh, it, it brings the water across um, an access track, just in that turn by it. And then we we put a concrete channel in all the way down the side of the uh, the road there, and this is the this is the route the pipes would have taken if if we'd have gone down the pipe route. So then it comes on to Woodhouse Road, and this is all the water that's already running down Woodhouse Road, and this is the contribution. So you can see this is a lot clearer this water, and that's because it's been through the attenuation pond. So any any sediment is, is you know settled out in the pond. Everything else on the right is already flowing down Woodhouse Road. And of course all this is heading now into the canal. Uh, this is a little uh, channel that runs at the side of Woodhouse Road. 
and that's where our, our water's entered as well into that channel. Um, but you'll see now um, what I call um, opportun opportunities in plain sight, really. We've got this lovely field here doing absolutely nothing, which, you know, is a great opportunity to put another attenuation pond in. Um, so this is just some of the, the pictures I took during construction. I mean, that's just a block work. It's just block work, you know, there's nothing very fancy about this, you know. Uh, it's pretty basic. 